Hello everybody and welcome back. This is yours truly, B9400. Today I'm blessing you with a two-part video. Oh, and please accept my apologies for the long hiatus a lot has been going on in my life. Anyway, in part one I will be discussing the life, legacy, and achievements of the Iranian-born Muslim diplomat Abdul Hossein Sardari, who during the Second World War is officially credited with saving the lives of 2,000 Iranian and non-Iranian Jews from imminent Nazi persecution. Whereas, in part two, I will be discussing the role various Muslim leaders played during the Second World War in terms of helping save Jewish people from Nazi persecution. Let's get into it, shall we? Abdul Hossein Sardari was an Iranian diplomat during World War II, often referred to as the Schindler of Iran, for his efforts to save Jews from the Holocaust. Born in 1914 in Tehran province, Iran, Sardari came from a prominent family and pursued a career in law and dip diplomacy. He was serving as the Iranian consul in Paris, France when Nazi Germany occupied France in 1940. During the occupation, Sardari used his diplomatic position to protect Iranian Jews and others from Nazi persecution. He argued that the Jews of Iranian descent living in France at the time were of Aryan origin and thus should not be subject to the anti-Semitic laws imposed by the Nazis. Sardari issued Iranian passports and travel documents to many Jews, enabling them to escape to safer territories. Sardari's actions, though largely unrecognized for many years, saved hundreds of lives. He took considerable personal risks, as Iran was officially neutral in the war, but maintained diplomatic relations with Nazi Germany. His efforts finally were finally acknowledged decades later and he has since been honored for his humanitarian work. Persian Schindler is a title often given to Absol, Abdul Hossein Sardari due to the similarities between his efforts and those of Oskar Schindler, the famous German industrialist who saved Jews during the Holocaust. Sardari's courageous actions in Nazi-occupied France during World War II earned him this moniker. While stationed at the Iranian consul in Paris, France, Sardari faced the challenge of protecting Iranian Jews living in France at the time. As Nazi persecution intensified, he argued that these Iranian Jews were not racially Jewish, according to Nazi ideology, but rather of Jigotin descent, a classification he proposed as an Aryan subgroup. This argument allowed him to successfully secure exemptions for many Iranian Jews from the oppressive anti-Semitic laws at the time. In addition to his legal and diplomatic maneuvering, Sardari issued Iranian passports and other documents to Jews, helping them escape the Nazi regime. He often did this at great personal risk and without explicit instructions or support from the Iranian government. Sardari's actions went largely unrecognized until many years after the war, but they eventually gained recognition leading to his being called the Persian Schindler. His story remains a powerful example of individual courage and the impact of diplomatic efforts in the face of atrocity. Now welcome to part two of who were the Muslims who helped save Jewish lives during the Holocaust. Several Muslim leaders and communities took courageous actions to save Jews during World War II, demonstrating compassion and solidarity despite the perilous circumstances. Here are a few notable examples. King Mohammed V of Morocco. During the Vichy regime, which governed parts of France and its colonies under Nazi influence, King Mohammed V of Morocco refused to cooperate with laws aimed at persecuting Jews. He reportedly said there are no Jews in Morocco, only Moroccan citizens, defying attempts to enact anti-Jewish measures. He protected thousands of Jews by ensuring that they remained part of the country's social fabric. Khalid Abdul Wahab, Tunisia Khalid Abdul Wahab, a Tunisian aristocrat, is known as the Arab Schindler. When German forces occupied Tunisia and North Africa, he hid Tuni Jewish families on his estate to protect them from persecution. One of the most well-known stories involves his protection of the Boykris family and others, saving them from Nazi soldiers. Abdul Wahab is the first Arab to be officially recognized as a righteous among the nations by the Yad Vashem Center in Israel. Selahattin Ukomen, Turkey. Selahattin Ukomen, a Turkish diplomat stationed in Rhodes, Greece during the Nazi occupation, intervened to save around 50 Jews by asserting that they were Turkish citizens and under his protection. 
He faced significant opposition, including from the Germans, but his diplomatic efforts helped many Jews escape deportation to concentration camps. For his bravery, Okamen was also recognized as righteous among the nations from the Yad Vashem Holocaust Remembrance Center located in Israel. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Al-Quds While the role of the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Al-Quds, Haj Amin al-Husseini is controversial due to his alliances with the Nazis. It's important to note that many religious scholars from the Muslim world at the time were opposed to the persecution of Jews. Various Muslim leaders and clerics outside of his influence contributed to efforts that protected Jewish people from harm during the war. These stories highlight the diverse and complex roles played by Muslims in various parts of the world during the Holocaust while acting out of a sense of duty, morality, or religious obligation to protect human lives. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, this has been yours truly, B9400, and if you liked what you've watched, uh, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and to switch on the notification bell in order to receive updates from me, which helps me out considerably in terms of expanding my brand name.